All right, welcome everybody. You are here for Kelvin Reports webinar um, entitled The Story Your Data is Telling You. So whether you have data now or whether you are planning on having data, we're gonna tell you how you can read it. Um, also today is a like a general overview of reports. And then we have two more uh, webinars that are coming. Uh, tomorrow's webinar is called Digging Deeper with Custom Reporting. And that's at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And 10 a.m. on Thursday, we'll be facilitating conversations with Kelvin Reports. So they're going to teach you how to take those reports back to your team and start those conversations uh, regarding the data that you have collected. So I am Jill. I work uh, at Kelvin, this awesome company. I am proud to work here and I'm proud of what we're doing. Um, I'm also proud of my colleagues that are here today. Justin will be um, doing the webinar with me, but we also have Holly, uh, which is a, she's a CSM like me and Justin. So is Valerie. Uh, Nikki is here too. And I think Ari and Jimmy are here as well. So you can get to know uh, your Kelvin team. All right, well, uh, just one housekeeping, please put questions in the chat. We have Holly that will be monitoring the chat for us. Um, we are gonna do the webinar for, I don't know, 20-ish minutes, and then we'll have a question and answer at the end. So any questions, please let us know. Okay, let's dive in. When, oh, this is the understand portion of what you should be doing with Kelvin. You wanna gather data, you wanna understand it, and then you wanna act on it. So we are at the middle, which is understanding what you're looking at. When you have data um, and you click on that little card for the pulse, the summary report automatically opens up and it's a broad overview. So this will give you a high level view of your uh, pulse and it'll show you overall favorability. Most of these um, calculations or, or most of this data or graphs you can click into to dig further deeper into it. Um, the first thing, I'm gonna go kind of left to right, top to bottom here. There's a favorability score that you cannot dig into, um, but this is your overall favorability. Uh, you'll see the little red arrow which means that it's gone down since the last administration, my favorability score. Um, if you have one administration, that's obviously not going to show. But once you have two or more administrations of that same pulse, you'll be able to see a trend. The participation um, is there too, along with the arrow down, but 93% participation is awesome, just so you know. Uh, the next one is comments. Comments is uh, it can be turned on or off. So some of you may have it turned on. And when you do, students can leave comments or staff or families can leave comments and they can either leave it showing their name or not showing their name, hiding it. And uh, we'll go into some comments later. And then questions, you can see that there's seven there. And if you were to click on it, it would go to directly to your questions um, scoring but we'll again get to that later. Then we have a trend graph. So this is, you can see three administrations and um, unfortunately it's <laughs> trending down, but if you only have one administration, you'll just see your one green uh, bar. If you have more, you will see that trend. And then at the bottom of the summary report is your dimension score. So this is how you scored on your different dimensions or question groups. And you can have from one to like as many as you want. So I can see that responsiveness is, I have two questions for that. And I scored higher in that than my love and belonging, which was I'm blind five questions, I think, at 55%. So that is the report when you click on the card on your launch pad that opens up. All right, Justin. The next report we're gonna go over is your questions report. So this is a broad overview of how students are answering questions. So from that summary report, 
and my dimension score, you'll see um, on the le the picture on the left, that was from the summary. What I did was I clicked on love and belonging and the questions popped up for love and belonging. You can also directly go to the questions report from the top little navigation and it will give you all of the questions. So there's multiple ways you can find these reports. And I can see that there were five questions, uh, the highest being my teachers care about me, which was scored really well. It's down a little bit um, on the comparison, but that uh, scored really well. I could see how many responses and how many comments were left. And then as you navigate down to the bottom one, this is how I'd look at it. I see students respect one another in this school and how safe do you feel when you are at school? And those are my lowest performing questions. So in my mind, I'm going to celebrate the teachers. And I, you know, I would definitely celebrate that on campus with your teachers and say, gosh, your students really feel that you care about them. Great job. But maybe we're having a student issue at school. Maybe there's some bullying. Maybe there's a, a student safety component that we need to work on. And um, that's when you would dive in even further. You could even click on those questions to get an even more detailed report on how students answered that. So that's the questions report. The comments report is the way we get the best qualitative data. Once you click on the comments report, you'll see this sentiment graph at the top. And please do not take that with 100% validity because what we're doing is we're grabbing words from your students' comments like school or fights or art, and we're trying to throw them into a positive, neutral, or negative light. Uh, obviously, school is a little hard. Is that good or bad? So this is a general graph of how they responded. Um, and towards the bottom, they... Uh, we have a list of the topics, the most talked about topics. So we have school, fights, art, anime, video games. And if you're interested in any one of those, you can dig in even further and look at those comments that, I mean, I would definitely look at fights and click in there and see what's going on. And again, comments, students can leave their name and or not. And we'll see that on the next page. So here's an example of what the comments would look like. All of these students decided to leave their names. And the question was, what is one thing you wish your teacher knew about you? And they really, you'll find some students really wanna share. They really believe that their voice will make a difference or they really want some someone to know something about them. So stay strong in all capitals. Uh, I have a short temper. If I was a teacher, I'd love to know that in school. Um, Christina obviously knows that that's a weakness of hers and she's working on it. And that's one thing you could support her with. I love everyone in my own way. I like Jace. I want to become an NBA player, but I promise it will not have a bad effect on my grades. So that's a cute, fun thing that I'd want to know about a student um, at my school or in my class. And then one more, I think, comments report slide. So this is something that we don't do, but you can do really easily on the internet and it's free. So you would just put your comments into a word cloud. Um, I don't know, word cloud site. <laughs> and what they will do is they will throw it into this lovely cloud. And the bigger words are the words that were mentioned the most. So obviously excited is a big thing um, in, in these comments. And I think that's awesome. So you can see just a real high view of what they're thinking. So unfortunately your students are stressed almost as much as excited, tired, but they're happy. And I love that and unsure and optimistic. So if you were to report back to your team, uh, your counselors, your principals, your teachers, this is a good thing idea for you to get people just to, without reading through a thousand comments it gives a good summary of what's going on at the site or the grade level or the um, district and i think justin you are next with the heat map 
Thanks, Joe. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, today is Tuesday, and so it's where I am. It's Gardener Day, and so hopefully we don't get that in the background. Uh, yeah, so thanks, Joe. Uh, so these are some of the reports, and we've been kind of going through the slide deck here, uh, which we will share with you so you can have it as a resource. Um, that way, you know, it's, it's just a good reminder to have all of uh, the the reports in one place. And if you wanted to share that with other people, uh, like what does Kelvin have in terms of reports? That's what we're kind of going over. And we're just going over some of these other reports. And so we're just going to show you a couple more. Um, and one of the ones that is probably the most uh, popular or the most seen in Kelvin is the heat map report. And uh, sometimes there's confusion about this report. Um, and uh, but I just want to let everyone know this report is very simple in that it's complex on the back end, but it's really designed to draw your eyes to the darkest places, the, the, the darkest orange and the darkest blue. That's really the, the, the whole point of this report and it's dynamic. So as you can see at the top here in this example, here we have all of our students here. So we can see, generally speaking, the lowest performing um, dimensions or questions are going to show up here in the top left. And then the highest will be on the bottom. And then as you go to the right, the scores will uh, go higher. And these are the favorability scores. So favorability just means that the student has responded, or if it's a, a staff report, the staff member has responded favorably or positively. And the way that's coded is by question. Each question is either coded on a Likert scale as being favorable or not favorable. Uh, and so that's how we calculate the score. So um, really what it is, there's not a, a, a hard set, um, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, performance ban of orange is this, yellow is this. It's really just to draw your attention to the most, um, the, the things that pop out to you. So right away, what I see here for my uh, American Indian group, I see overall they're at 46%, which is pretty low compared to everyone else. Uh, so then my highest performing group that I could see is our, my it's my female and uh, looks like is Hispanic. And I could see this question, kind of what Jill was talking about before in the questions report, we could see that my teachers care about me is um, the highest rated question. So that's kind of giving you an overall picture, but I'm just going to jump out of this for a second. And I, and I'll show you what it looks like in the live. So when you go to the summary at the top, we call this our Skittles menu because it has all the colors of the rainbow. And that's where you can navigate to all of the different reports. So Jill has already talked about uh, the questions report and the summary report. And what I'm gonna show you is again, that heat map report. So here's what it looks like in this example. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And as you can see, here are your different demographic groups. Um, and right now we're looking at it by dimension, but we can also look at it by question. So you can toggle this. And as you look at each administration, you'll notice also you can go back and look at previous administrations. So you, you can kind of con compare and contrast that way. So right now we're looking at the, the latest administration from December. And you can see here are the results. So this is kind of what we were talking about before, and you can look at it by dimension or by question. But then if I were to change it up, so right now this is telling one story, but then if I go to grade level, it might tell a different story. So right away, you can see some of these groups have changed and the way that the heat map looks has changed. But again, what are my eyes being drawn to? I see over here on the bottom right, the most positive or most favorable responses are by the third grade, right? which kind of makes sense. Uh, third graders are a happy group. Um, they haven't had the, the maybe as many stresses in life as the seventh grade. So you can see over here on the left, the seventh graders are having the hardest time and they are overall at 49% compared to 58% favorable to everyone else. So you could see the darker the orange, the more unfavorable the response, the darker the blue, the more positive or more favorable the response. And then if you hover over this, you can see what the individual questions were. And again, you can look at this by question or you can look at this by dimension. And in all of our reports and 
something that you could do also, I just want to quickly mention is using this filter tab. So on the heat map report, we already have filters, but if you wanted to focus in on a particular group, uh, for example, if you were in the summary, as Jill mentioned, when you click on the filters and you wanted to focus in, uh, focus in on a particular uh, student group like Hispanic or Latino, or you wanted to focus in on, on race or a grade level, you could totally do that. So for example, if I click on seventh grade, because they were having the hardest time. Now, when I look at my reports, I could see the comparison between my seventh grade and the rest of the school. So this is something that will follow as you go through the reporting. And I could see the scores are a little bit lower here. And again, this is everything that Jill already talked about. So this is where you can kind of drill in and at the question level and then get to the response level and see the breakdown here. So last but not least, I do want to mention, I'm going to go back here to our presentation. And I just want to mention the participants report. So the participants report uh, looks generally like this. It's, oh, it's on that Skittles menu. And so in this example, we could see this particular student. This is a really good report for uh, counselors. And I do want to also mention this information is permission based. So only those who have permission by default, that's the system admin. So if you're the system admin, you have access to see this report, report by default. Uh, but if you did want to expand that access to counselors or teachers or any group that you want to share this data with, um, where you see student specific names, that is a permission that you can add. And uh, that is in your permissions under the settings. And uh, if you have questions about that, we can I could show you later. So in this report, we could see we get some really good information. So because uh, one thing you might see, you might have 90 percent plus participation rate, but then you might see, uh, for example, this student only took one minute. Sometimes you'll see they skipped through everything and they took the whole survey in you know 15 seconds. So that's qualitative data that you kind of want to look at. And so we could see that Derek here answered eight questions took seven minutes, so it took some time to think about these questions and then provided a comment. And then we also noticed the comparison. So 57% overall favorability uh, for the survey that Derek took. And uh, that's 43 points down from the last time Derek took this same pulse. So these are the kinds of things that we're looking for in this report. Um, and then you can also filter by the dimension as well. So we could see, for example, this example, uh, Lorenz took six minutes, or excuse me, answered only six of the eight questions, took 30 seconds, 31 seconds, didn't leave any comments. But again, we could see a downward trend here from the last time. And then we see an, another downward trend here, whereas with Kobe, we see a 3% increase. So that's the participants report. It's, um, it's really good to kind of get an overall sentiment. Uh, so if you, one is to give a quick pulse again for the CalHOPE survey. If you've taken that, um, you know, that's uh, all of the reporting is very high level. And again, everything in Calvin is permission based, but this report is really designed more for those uh, quick pulses. Like maybe you gave a five question pulse as a counselor and you wanted to get a pulse on where students are, or you will have a tier one group and you want to see uh, uh, there's a particular group within that tier one that you want to follow up on, you can ask another pulse and then get that comparison data from the first time they took the pulse, which leads me to the next uh, slide here where MTSS tier grouping. So you can filter and track. So you can also create custom groups in Kelvin. So let's say you have a tier one group that you want to compare um, and you want to see growth and you want to compare from the last time. You could totally do that in Kelvin using custom groups. And then you can filter and track. So for teachers, counselor, anyone who's uh, doing any type of MTSS, you can use this report to kind of track that. Oh, I guess we got to the end. Uh, but I do want to also mention, I'm just going to jump back into the live. So here's where you find that report, uh, the participants report. And I, again, it's permission-based. And I just want to quickly say, I know we're coming up on 20 minutes here. I just want to quickly say, um, where do you get these reports from or how do you manage these permissions? 
in the upper right hand corner, when you click on your initial, if you're the system admin, you click on settings. And then you'll see here, and now I'm in a demo, so there's no uh, student information here, actual students. And you'll see under manage users, groups, and permissions. So you can create those custom groups by clicking on groups and then creating a, either a, a custom student group that you're following, or you can track a staff group as well. So for example, if you wanted to create a group called uh, request responders, or you wanted to create a group called, you know, uh, uh, tier one intervention, you could create those groups here. And then those will show up in your reports. And you can also be uh, specific in when you give a pulse to a particular student group. Uh, so the permission I was talking about is right here under permissions. So again, I clicked on the my initial, went to settings, and then I went to permissions. And then here is where you're going to set those permissions. So up here at the top, if you give teachers access to view student timeline and requests, teachers are going to see that participants report. So if that's something you don't want them to see, you would simply remove them from that list and then hit save. And one other thing to note here is we also have something called limited access. So for example, you might have a group of board members that you want to see that high level heat map report, but you don't want them to see any student specific information, any PII. So you can add them to this list here. And so let's say, you know, I only, I don't want my teachers to see any student, any student specific information. If I add them to that limited access and hit save, when a teacher goes into look at any of those reports, they are not going to see the participation or the participants report. And I will just quick, quickly mention the participation report is another great way, another tool that you can use uh, to track who has taken it, who has not taken it. So if I wanted to just, as it's live, I can monitor and look to see who hasn't taken it. And maybe I notice, oh, these are all Mr. Garcia's um, class members. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot him over an email and say, hey, can you have the kids uh, click on Boogie, the little dog that pops up and have them complete the pulse? Uh, so it's a way that I can just quickly track. And again, you can use those filters here in the upper right-hand corner. So one other thing, and as you look at it through the, uh, the lens of equity, uh, you want to make sure that all the groups are participating. So there might be one particular group, you know, if you're looking at, um, let's say, uh, African-American, and you're concerned that this group is not participating, you can actually use the participation rate as it's happening and look and see who has not responded. And you can get an overall participation rate uh, by those different groups on the participation report. I see one other question uh, in the chat. Can you filter so that each teacher can see their own class? So if I'm a teacher, by default, I'm going to see my classes. And so I could see as a teacher uh, who has completed it and who has not completed it. And I'm going to go ahead and pause there. And uh, I'm going to open it up for any questions that are in the chat. And Jill, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to mention about any of these reports as we're kind of looking through the chat. And feel free, uh, there's both the question and answer feature in uh, Zoom right now, or you can use the chat. You can use either one of those, and we would love to answer your questions. Yeah, and just keep in mind, um, reach out to your CSM for anything. We can dive into these reports with you. We can set up a call where we can look at your actual data. Uh, if you want to go through some system admin permissions or groups or whatever, reach out. We are all here to help and we want to help. So we'd love to chat with you and uh, see us. Yes, yeah, sorry, your customer success managers. That's us. So reach out at any time um, if you have like any questions. Or uh, also goals for your next pulse. So you may be part of the Cal Hope group where you're giving one uh, now and then again in March, but we can guide you through giving pulses in between. So say you saw a need from the pulse that you gave now and you want to work on it, uh, we can help you create, you know, new ones from our library or questions that you're, you've come up with. 
So we're here for you. Okay, Lisa, I see your chat. Yes, so um, Lisa wants to make sure the heat map reports represent um, the student groups. So um, some of you may have given us all of your student programs information, your uh, homeless, your race, your sped kids, your gate kids, and some of you might not have. But the more information that we can take from your uh, student information system, the more we can report to you. So the more you give, the more we give. Uh, so if you're not seeing those, let your uh, customer success manager know and we can talk you through adding those groups. Yeah, and that's a, that's a great point, uh, Lisa, because this is where we wanna encourage you to get all the data that you can in from your student information system, because when you're looking at this heat map report, it's gonna be more robust, the more demographic information you're sharing. So we will work with you. Uh, one other group that we are working on, uh, trying to make it easy for you all is like homeless and foster youth. I know that's something that um, is typically tracked at the county or state level, uh, but we can work with you to get, if you need to get a flat file in, we can get that information into Kelvin so that you can look at these reports with those uh, student groups in mind. And again, you can make up your own groups. You might have a group of students you're tracking because they have poor attendance or something. You can manually put those kids into a group and track them as well on the heat map. As Justin is doing. Yeah, it's, it's really easy. So like once, uh, so for example, uh, you might have some at-risk groups here and then you can simply add students here and look them uh, by name and just simply add them into the groups and then, or you can remove them as they're coming and going. So this is something you could do manually in Kelvin. And then once these groups are created, then they're going to show up in your uh, heat map reports and they're going to be useful as a filter when you're looking at the reports. They say to wait five question, five seconds to see if people have questions because I know the brain is thinking. So I, if you have a question you thought about asking, go ahead and ask it. Justin, I answered this one in the Q&A, but maybe you can show in the latest activity edit settings where folks would add in staff that they want to share the results with. And so they're wondering specifically for um, like identifying administrators or teachers that they want to share the results with. How would they do that? So that would be those custom groups you mentioned. You showed a little bit with the students, but maybe you'd show where they would do that. Yeah. So within your uh Within your pulse, you as the author of the pulse or as a system admin, you'll 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 see this latest activity button. Uh, so it, again, it's not exactly a report, but it gets you to the place where you can manage either your schedule or get to your settings. So when you click on this, you can get to edit settings, and then this is that page that you were on when you're when you were creating the pulse. So one thing that's really cool about Calvin is as you are uh, designing it and you realize you made a mistake or uh, you want to change the level of access, you could do it live. Um, and so you don't have to wait until it closes to make any changes. You can make a live change. So for example, if you wanted to expand who you want to share the results with, you could just simply, let's say you created a custom group and you wanted to now add them as uh, someone who could see the results, you can simply add them here. And let's say that's advisory teachers and now just hit save changes. And now advisory teachers are gonna get um, to see the results of the pulse when it closes. And also up here, if you did initially miss a group within your student set, you can just click in here and update who you're giving the uh, pulse to. So let's say you wanted to expand it and also include um, eighth grade in this, you would simply Click on that and then hit update. And then that's going to automatically update once you hit save changes. 
Again, always hit save changes whenever you're making any changes. And then just as a note, here's where also you can enable the comments and that feature allows students to speak to an adult. And then there's a quick link here on how to uh, manage users or, or get to your groups. So let's say you're right now, you're in the middle of, well, I don't have a group yet. You can just click on this groups and then it's gonna take you to your various groups. And then you would just simply create a new staff or student group, name it, and then start adding people uh, to that group. Or you can edit a group you already have. So say you wanna add like a TOSA to school staff. So you'd click on the school staff and add a person. Yeah, one thing to note, so these ones, they have a little lock on them. These are oh. what's coming from your student information system. Uh, and then these are the ones, the ones where you see the little trash can. Those are the custom groups that were manually created that you manage. So the the dip, the the importance is that these we can't edit because it's coming from your sys, your student information system. Uh, but if there's a group that is not coming from your student information system, like counselors or something like that, and you want that group to exist, uh, all you have to do is create the group. Um, and then once you have it, you can manage it, you can add folks to it. And, and then one thing you can also do, let's say there's users in here that, that are not coming from your sys. You just click on the users tab here, and then you can create a new admin user. We just need their first last name and their email, and then their role that they're going to be. So if they're uh, staff at Boogie Middle, then you just go ahead and give them that access so if you give them access as a staff member, this is administrative access, they will see all students at Boogie Middle. All right, do we, I know we are past our time. It is 1033 Pacific time. And so we're gonna hang around to see if there are any other questions, but that's all we have for you today. And we just wanted to make it short and sweet for you all. And so you're welcome to stay. We're going to be available for a few minutes longer if you have any questions. And we'll just continue to monitor the chat. And um, we'll be available to answer any questions you have. And come tomorrow to our second webinar in a three-part series. <laughs>